Hello everybody. Uh, in this video I'm going to be going through the updates to the preset grid generator in version 2.5.0 including a lot of uh, new features. Uh, for anybody who's already purchased this as the color grid generator uh, you should receive an email uh, with any download information to a discounted version of the updates uh, and if you have not received that then sh shoot me an email uh, either with your PayPal order number or just your PayPal email and we'll get that sorted out. Uh, there are quite a few updates uh, in this version. Uh, first off, uh, as the name implies, it is now labeled as the preset grid generator rather than color grid, meaning that it now supports uh, all preset types, uh, which was a pretty common request. Uh, also, we now have support for uh, preset macros, quote unquote, uh, basically a system where you can create a preset out of these macros uh, with another macro. So, for example, uh, I've built a couple here already, um, but there's now a variable inside of each trigger macro setting uh, which macro within a row has been most recently fired. Using those, there is a creator macro that will allow you to store this combination of macros into another macro. Uh, run just the same as any of these all triggers. Uh, it's just firing a combination rather than everything down a single line. So just to demonstrate, um, if we decide we're going to do, I don't know, shades of blue, why not? So we can store this into macro 898, so we just click on the create macro, we give it the macro number we're storing to, say enter, and then we can see that that has been updated. So we relabel that as blues, why not? Um, so there's our new preset, so now we can fire between any of these presets uh, as a starting point, basically to have uh, a color queue, more or less, stored in the form of a macro, so that if you are wanting to, uh, and I'm just going to keep saying color because that's the primary target of this, um, if you've got some color queues that you want to build, um, you can set them up to be fired through here, basically using the visual feedback of this system, so that you're not using this in combination with separate color executors which would at that point invalidate the visual feedback on this. So this allows it to kind of come together in a, to a more cohesive system uh, and prevent you from having to hit, in this case, seven different macros to load a new set of colors onto your stage. You want to go to red and orange, click red and orange. You want to go to your blues, click on that. Uh, and you can create combinations of that. Uh, in the user config we'll be showing um, the settings for how many of these you can include. You can include as many as you want off the bat. Um, this also stores to any macro number, so if you want to add more in after your installation, that's not a problem. Uh, the biggest feature that people will probably be excited about is this system now supports uh, custom images, and I'll be explaining that at the very end of this video. But same as the fades generator that came out last week, um, you can now create your own version of this plugin that includes your customized images uh, that you can then just load up onto a show file wherever and run. You don't have to separately import your images and all that. It'll all stay in one contained package. I'm moving my hands like you guys can see me. <laughs> um, some other smaller features that have been included. Uh, so I already showed you guys the um, the variable line that's being used with the uh, presets system. Um, you can also now customize how each macro is labeled. You can customize how the sequences are labeled. Uh, we'll be going through all of that. Uh, it also now supports the option for individual sequences for each group. So the default system, the way it was originally programmed, was building one sequence, which is how this was set up, uh, and then filtering each sequence through a different world of fixtures. Um, I set it up that way just because it minimizes the number of queues that, for example, delay sweeps have to be stored to. Um, however, there are people wanting to be able to have separate control, having separate naming, uh, so I have provided the option to uh, have a separate sequence for each group instead. The total amount of data should be pretty much the same um, because you'll have less fixtures in each sequence to update, but um, again, that was just the way I had set it up because that's how I was running it. So you now have the flexibility is what I'm getting at. Um, like the color effect picker, you can set the background color of the layout for anybody who cares about that. Um, that background color will apply to all the macros as well. Um, any macros with transparency, I should clarify. Um, images, Jesus. And what else, what else, what else? I think that's it. Um, so with all that covered, uh, we're going to get into the user config of how to set up any new features. Uh, and then we'll be taking a look at the end of this video again on how to customize the images and include your own image set into the plugin. 
Alrighty, so let's open up our plugin. So we're going to right click or edit click on the plugin. Uh, and at the top here, we have our user config variables. Uh, so I've rearranged these based on order of importance, basically. Uh, at the very top, we have our three main settings that people might want to adjust. Uh, below that, we have our starting points for where everything will be stored. And then below that, we've got what I've labeled technical stuff, which is all of the stuff that you can tweak if you're trying to accomplish something really specific, um, but generally you won't need to. Um, so starting at the top, uh, we've got our preset type variable. I'm going to change this to 2 just to demonstrate. So 4 will be the default, that's for color. Uh, I'm going to change it to 2 for position just to demonstrate that it works with other preset types. Um, our macro presets count. So those preset generating, or those preset macros I showed you earlier, um, this is how many of those it will create. So I'm going to change this to 16 just to show it. Background color, I'm going to leave this as black. So this is a hex string. First two values are red, then green, then blue, as explained here. Um, and again, hex values, so 0 to F, not 0 to 9. Um, so again, I'm leaving this all as zeros for black. Um, our starting points, I'm going to leave these. This is These are the settings for my own show file. Um, they're all going to come defaulted to one. And again, just like any of my other plugins, uh, nothing will be overwritten unless it's explicitly stated. Um, so this will be the starting point where it looks for space, and if it does not have enough space, it'll advance until it finds the space it needs. Below that, we get into the technical stuff realm. Um, so down here is where we have our setting for storing separate sequences if you are choosing to go that route. So you can change this to true, and we actually will do that for this installation. Um, keep source images. Um, so just a brief explanation of what this means. Uh, so the plugin has a set of images embedded into its code. If we go all the way down to the bottom, we have this giant XML file that's included in the plugin. Um, that's the images. So what it will do is it will import all of those images, it will copy the ones that it needs, and then it will delete all of the source images. Um, this is just if you are trying to hold on to those images to work with them for whatever reason. Um, only set it to true if you're trying to do that, otherwise you're going to start importing a lot of extra crap um, that's just going to take up space in your show file. Uh, below that we have our naming settings. <coughs> uh, and these are set up with uh, some wildcard options that are explained below. Um, but those wildcard options have been set up so that, for example, if you change your preset type, um, your variables, your macros, your sequence will all be updated to reflect that new preset type or the presets within it. Um, so if you're interested in playing around with that for any specific needs that you have, uh, you <clears throat> sorry, uh, you can dig through those. Uh, but again, the defaults will work even as you change settings up here. Nothing, No changes up here should require changes down here. Just change these again if it's something you are wanting to play with specifically. Uh, so that covers the user config settings. So we're gonna save those. We're gonna check our system monitor. We don't have any red text, so we didn't put any syntax errors in. Uh, and we're gonna run the plugin with these settings. So we're gonna go, um, before I run it, I'm actually gonna check my, so we're gonna go with these position presets, I'm just going to give it 30 through 37. Um, I don't have any preset images loaded in, but I'm just going to be demonstrating for the sake of the new preset types. So good. we're going to verify our user config settings. Um, it will verify which preset type we are using now. Uh, and if you enter an invalid number in, it will let you know. Um, so we're going to say OK. It's going to ask for group numbers in my file. It's going to be 482 through 488. Hit enter again. and then we can see it's reflecting the new preset type. So what do we say, 31 through 37? All right, and anytime you enter a range, it will let you know however many presets it found in that range. So we'll say, okay, hit enter again. It's gonna ask us to link images. Obviously colors don't really go with images, so we're just gonna put whatever in here. Then we'll see it run. Uh, which executor page? We'll say 152, executor 101. It'll install everything, and then it'll let you know which layout it's stored to. So we're looking at layout 5 here. So if I switch over to layout 5, we can see our new um, grid created. Uh, we can see also on page 152 that we have, um, sorry, that it has installed separate, or separate sequences for each executor. Um, so looking at the sequence numbers, we can see that these are all different, as well as the names are different, which wouldn't be possible with the same uh, sequence. Um, so that's how this is running now. Uh, if we fire our, all of our first queue, we can see these all go into our first position. Um, all of our naming has been set up reflecting the presets. Um, 
our background matches. I'm trying to think of any other settings that we adjusted, um, but we have everything set up here um, as per our user config settings. Um, trying to think real quick if there's anything that I have left out, but I think we're good here. Um, and just to demonstrate that these new generated presets work, I'm going to store it in 973. Great, and now if we fire an all row, we can fire that macro back and we get our diagonal row again. Um, again, obviously this will be better set up for if you are using custom images, um, if you're going to use different preset types. But that's the general overview of what all it will be allowing you to do now. Uh, so in the next part of the video, we're going to be going through uh, setting up your own customized images to use with some of these different preset types or just to use with colors if you've got your own custom color images. Alrighty, so let's start looking at the process of implementing custom images into this plugin. Um, unlike the fades layout generator, um, in this one, the order of the images will matter and the naming of them will not. Um, so before we get started, uh, let's take a look at how we've arranged these. Uh, so I've only got, uh, what, 26 out of this set. Uh, they were for an old plugin idea that didn't happen. Um, so I've only got 26 here, so I'm going to use the first 26 out of my solid group and the first 26 out of my arrows group. Basically, I'm going to be making these into the off images, and I'm going to be using these as the on images. Um, one thing to be aware of is that <clears throat> while the naming of the setup does not matter, um, it has been set up to specifically ignore any prefixes that start with a letter, two numbers, um, and I can expand that to be any amount of numbers, and an underscore. Um, and the reason I've set it up that way, first off, this is actually what it turns it into for the plugin to use. Um, but when I'm generating the plugins, I'll organize them this way in a folder uh, just so they can all stay together uh, in the order I want them to be in. So if you want to have a way to name them for use with these plugins, um, that would be the best way to do it. I use a prefix for whatever type of image, the number, underscore, and then the name. So the builder plugin is set up to ignore that kind of a prefix and obtain the rest of the name as the actual name of the image. Um, with that said, uh, again, from there, it's just order. So whatever order you put them in one set, make sure it's the same in the next set and make sure you have the same number of images provided in each range. So if we go edit our uh, plugin over here, oops, I'm gonna right click on this and we have three input fields for the images that we can use. So for arrow, I put 547 to 572, if we take a look, 547 to 572 gives us our first 26 images of that set. Uh, going back over our on images are going to be 589 through 614, so that is these plus ones. And then the off images 505 to 530, which will be this set. Again, I've made sure it's the same number of images in each set. Uh, the plugin does handle empty spaces without any image, any issues. Sorry, um, it just does not allow for mismatched total number of images uh, and it will give you an error if you try to uh, use a mismatched number of images. So with all of that said, um, we are going to run this with those settings. Uh, sorry, there was one more setting. Uh, plugin slots, just where it's going to start looking for space to store that plugin. I'm just going to leave it defaulted to one. Uh, so we can run our plugin here. It'll ask for the plugin name. I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, plus grid. And then it'll confirm with us uh, that it has found the same number of images in each range, as well as the image range that we provided to it. Uh, and then it'll tell us what the final name of the plugin is going to be, including the version number of the build. So if we say OK, we will see our new plugin generated. And if we run this plugin, so I'm just going to run it on default settings, I'll give it my usual groups, give it presets. Oops, color presets one through five. And then what takes us to the screen, we can see that it has replaced our on images with these pluses. So it has successfully brought those images in. I'm um, just gonna give it one, two, three, four, five. Then it'll build our layout. We'll say page 154, starting button 101. And it's created. So layout 10, if we go over here and let's look at layout number 10. 
and there's our new uh, color grid arrangement. So now if I fire a row of these, we get our pluses in each row instead of the empty squares and the filled squares. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention was that once you've created your custom version, uh, if you want to be able to use that with earlier versions of MA, uh, there is a, another included plugin called Plugin Export Reverse Compatible. Uh, use that with the plugin and it will export it uh, just modifying the XML script that it creates to say that it was created in version 3.0 so that if you try to import the plugin into any earlier versions, it will still work. Um, so if I run that here, I'll just give it plugin number three. It'll go ahead and take that name in, so we'll hit enter on that. And then it'll open a file system showing, uh, if you're on, on PC, it'll open the file system to that folder so that you can then go find somewhere down the list. Uh, what was it called? Plus grid? Yeah, there it is. So you can find that Lua and XML file uh, and then either move that over to your um, thumb drive or keep it there to use in other versions of on PC. And that is how you export your created uh, plugin version. Um, and that's it for as far as implementing new images. So again, the naming does not matter. Um, the order does, and having the same number of images per provided range is what matters. Uh, so that's it for all of the updates to this plugin. Uh, if you don't have it already, uh, you can download it from my website at geoffdesigns.com. If you do have it already, uh, use that old download link. Uh, you can contact, contact me on my website um, or through Facebook with questions, comments, or suggestions for plugins or tutorials. Uh, you can subscribe on here, follow me on Facebook, all the social media things. Um, hope you guys uh, will find some use for some of these updates. Uh, stay tuned for more toys coming out as we're all still stuck in quarantine. And uh, happy programming! <laughs>